Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we finally got our hands on the HP Stream Mini. The folks at uh, HP PR were kind enough to let us borrow this for the weekend because my order got canceled. I guess they had too many orders for this thing already. So this is a $179 Windows PC very similar to their Chrome box in that it has a, a nice Celeron processor, a 1.4 gigahertz dual core processor, two gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. And what's good about this processor on this device as well as on the Chrome box is that it is running a Haswell based chip, which takes a little bit more power, but of course it's gonna be plugged into the wall. So it doesn't really matter for battery life, of course, uh, which gives you better performance, both for web browsing, uh, playing some games and other things that you would do with the computers. This is a really decent uh, Windows computer that you can get for under 200 bucks and it performs a lot better than uh, many of the sub $200 Windows computers we've looked at previously and if you looked at my Chromebox videos if you wanted to run Windows on that device it took a lot of work to get it kind of shoehorned on uh, this one's a lot easier of course because it comes installed with Windows right off the bat uh, but it's also very friendly with other operating systems too so we're gonna step through the performance in this video and then we're gonna have two other videos geared to more of a techie audience where we're gonna take it apart show you how you can upgrade the hard drive and RAM and a third third video where we look at installing alternative operating systems. So let's take a look at the hardware first. You've got four USB 3.0 ports on here. So high speed USB across the board, two on the front next to the power button and another two on the back. Also on the back, you've got your uh, power adapter plug there. It's got an external power supply, but it's not very big. Just one of these little guys. So it won't be like an Xbox plugging into your wall with a huge power brick. Uh, so that's nice. You have the ability to plug it into displays that go beyond 1080p. So I definitely know it'll run like a QHD display, like those 2560 by 1440s. And I think it can go up to 4K. Uh, so you have DisplayPort here as well as HDMI. But really what you can do is go out and buy a pretty inexpensive 1080p monitor. You can get them for like 150, 200 bucks. Uh, and you're off and running with this thing. So you really don't need uh, an expensive display to drive it and get uh, good results. So you got those two USB ports we mentioned over there, a gigabit ethernet, a headset microphone adapter here, and then a little Kensington lock. On the side here, you have an SD memory card slot. Uh, the cards do stick out. I know a lot of people are curious about how these uh, card slots work. So the card does stick out a little bit, um, but again, this is not a portable device. So you don't really have to worry about uh, that issue there as far as it getting caught on something, but it does uh, stick out there. And you'll notice too, there are vents here. So there is a fan to uh, export its hot air, uh, but it really doesn't make all that much noise. And I found even when it was under load, uh, this really wasn't uh, something that's going to be distracting in a home theater environment. So I know a lot of people might be looking at this as a potential home theater device. So that's the hardware. And now what we're going to do is plug it in and see how it works. So I'm going to push the power button here and we'll see how fast it boots up. It does boot uh, pretty much as fast as all the other low end devices we've looked at. Windows really does come up very quickly no matter what you're running these days. So uh, you'll see a similar boot up sequence here as it is coming up uh, to our main screen. So I'm just going to log in real quick and then we'll uh, poke around. I think we're going to start with some uh, web browsing first. So let's go pull up the full screen here. What I'd like to do is run Chrome on all of these devices because that's typically what I test. And it's also a good way to test against the Chromebooks and boxes as well. So we'll just go over to CNN.com here. Uh, that page has gotten a lot more involved lately. Uh, so you'll see how fast that kind of uh, renders when it comes up here. So it does come up pretty quickly. There's a lot of stuff for it to process when it uh, gets there, but it does a, a pretty decent job of loading up. I found even on some of my higher end PCs lately, CNN has taken a while to get going with their uh, new site design and everything, but you can see it pops up here very quickly. Uh, there are some benchmarks you can run uh, for these kinds of devices. And I use uh, the Octane test, which runs in Chrome. And this device scored 11,398, the average across 10 tests, which is uh, pretty good and in fact as fast as uh, those other Chrome boxes that we've looked at running with the same processor. So this is a, if you can look at kind of the comparison between this one and some of the other low end PCs that we've looked at, some of the Chrome books and some of the devices that are running like Atom processors or lower powered uh, Intel processors, this is a lot faster. So I think you'll be pretty pleased with that. I will pop over to YouTube real quick here and you can see uh, how fast that comes up and uh, it does uh, render the pages very nicely and the videos play pretty much right off the bat as well. We can go, um, you know, pop this up to uh, 1080p here and then maybe go full screen with it so you can see how that performs. And once things settle down, it does uh, run very smoothly and quickly uh, in YouTube and I'm sure Netflix and others will uh, perform the same way. Now, a lot of people also like to see how well it can run things like Microsoft Word and other stuff. So we're gonna pop open here and load up this uh, really involved newsletter template that I usually use on most of my devices to kind of look at how well uh, things can get rendered on the page. And as you can see here, it really scrolls smoothly. Things really pop up nicely. There isn't a lot of slowdown as I'm working my way uh, back and forth across the document. The only thing that comes up on these 
uh, is that you do have a little bit of text delay, not because the machine is slow, but because Microsoft has started to implement this really, uh, supposedly a nice way of smoothly animating the text as it goes on the screen. But what it does is it makes it look like uh, it's running slower. So as you can see here, as I'm typing, it's, um, you can hear the keys going, and it takes a minute for the text to catch up. Uh, that is actually a feature of, uh, of Word at this point, not really a fault of the computer. So if you're running an older version of Word or figure out some way to turn off that text animation, uh, things will run a lot more smoothly. So the next thing we're going to take a look at uh, is multimedia, and specifically playing back uh, Blu-ray MKV files, so very high bitrate HD movie files, as well as tuning live television off of my HD home run that I have here in the house. And we're going to do that uh, with Cody, formerly known as XBMC. All right, so let's boot up Cody real quick here and see how it looks. There we go. It boots up very quickly. We'll go over to files here. Uh, the first thing we'll do is click on my WD My Cloud, where I store most of my uh, Blu-ray backups for movies that I own here. So we're going to click on Star Trek real quick, our usual test. And as you can see, it just comes right up. This is coming in over the network. So we're streaming this uh, via the gigabit ethernet from a WD My Cloud elsewhere on my network. As you can see, it spins up very quickly, full HD, full frame rate. And I can even pop into the middle of the movie here, kind of seek ahead, and it will uh, get us right there very, very quickly. So it's really good as a multimedia tool. Uh, we'll pop out of here real quick and then go back to the video files and uh, actually tune some live cable from my HD Home Run, which is a great device that allows you to use your cable television over your uh, existing computer network, which is pretty cool. So we'll tune into a little football game here. And this is coming in live MPEG-2. And again, uh, decoding that in real time and uh, doing really well in full HD as well. Now, no low-end PC review would be complete without a little Minecraft. And we're running it here. I did install the Optifine plugin, which gives you a little bit better frame rate, uh, which I recommend you do, especially if you're on lower-end hardware. Now, what's interesting is that uh, I'm able to run the settings higher on this and still get a good frame rate. So we're seeing uh, frame rates over 30 frames per second. I can tell because my, uh, my, my uh, display here keeps clipping. My video system only does 30 frames, so if you go above that, you get a little bit of uh, uh, weirdness there. Uh, but it does look pretty nice, and it does run very nicely. So I think if you're on you know, a 60 hertz display or something, you're going to get a really decent performance out of it. It's not going to go crazy fast, but it's going to be fast enough to run things decently. And uh, what's nice is that I'm running with a higher uh, graphic mode here than we do normally on these sub $200 computers. So this is running with fancy graphics. I've uh, put the clouds on. I got the clear, uh, transparent water are running uh, so it does uh, for you know for this kind of gaming uh, it does do a lot better and it does look pretty nice it'll slow down a little bit as it starts to load up some of the background stuff but again those are all settings that you can adjust and get uh, something to where you'd really like it to be uh, perfect but uh, this certainly does a lot better than a lot of the atom based uh, devices that we looked at that cost uh, the same or a little bit more so that is the HP Stream Mini PC, and it definitely lived up to my expectations. I expected it actually to run this well because it's pretty much got the same hardware uh, as the Chrome box, which we've spent a lot of time with. But uh, it is running Windows. It's a little bit less restrictive in uh, the kinds of things you can put on it as a result. So it is easier to work with. You're going to see in the uh, upcoming videos that uh, you can upgrade it and you can load other operating systems on it without a lot of effort. So uh, from that standpoint, for people that like to tweak their systems, this one you're going to have some fun with. Uh, certainly a little bit more complete than maybe a bare bone system might be. Uh, but for families, it's really good too because you can add a PC to the house uh, for under $200. It'll plug into any HD television, just get a cheap keyboard and mouse, uh, and your kids got a computer that will uh, do all of their schoolwork as well as some light gaming and some web browsing and everything else. Uh, really nice, uh, complete computer. Uh, for 179 bucks, and I think that is a wonderful thing to have available in the marketplace. So that is the HP Stream Mini. Uh, stay tuned. I've got more coming on some of the internal stuff and some of the operating system stuff, but I think if you're you know, looking to see if this is a decent computer for the price, it really is, and I really recommend it. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.